All right, everyone, it's time for the occult video 180, the big 180 here. 20 more to go probably in this year. I want to get to a 200. Don't fear dying. Uh, just a little reminder for people. It ties into the uh, video that I made on Ashuba. And some people, by the way, how to spell that A-S-H-U-B-A. Some people, I've had like three different people message me about that because I guess that they liked that video a lot, but they couldn't actually look up the term because they didn't know how it was spelled. You know, I've got a Vermont accent, so, you know, it's not exactly perfect. I come from the other side. It has a little bit of a different twang and dialect. This side of Vermont, it's like uh, books on tape mode. It's like parts of northern New York or something. I, I don't. I, I have an accent. It's also mixed with a very small amount of Massachusetts and Rhode Island. So it's, it's like, at least I'm not from Maine, I suppose. But, but uh, it's time to remind you not to fear dying. Because just uh, consider this. People don't think about this. And I think when people get to their deathbed, they're like ready to die. They're like, oh shit, you know, I never really considered the fact that my mortality was impending. Now I'm dying. Oh, you know, and they get all afraid. They're like, oh, what if there's nothing? Uh, what if I go to hell? Or, you know, what if I have bad karma and, you know, I come back as a toad? Uh, or something. I come back as a salamander in a soon-to-be-drained Chinese coal tailing pond. Uh, then they get afraid, and I think that if you're really afraid and under a lot of stress when you're dying, it's probably not a good thing, because uh, uh, let's say that it's just physical. Let's say that atheism is true. What's going to happen, you're going to be under stress at the last moments of life as your brain is sort of flickering out. It's randomly going to be flashing all sorts of weird shit because part of it's still going to be firing for a while. You know, even though you're clinically dead, you're, you're no longer really consciously there, you're still going to be, you, you might end up experiencing things as though you were physically present in them from your memory because you're no longer getting neural input from, from touch or from seeing or something like that. That would be terrifying if your memories uh, uh, are being controlled by a lot of stress hormones at the time. I would think that'd be very unpleasant. It would be like being in hell, and unfortunately, your concept of time is going to slow way down too. So it's going to feel like a longer time than it actually is. What's only technically 10 minutes might feel like 10 years. I would think that's a bad thing you want to avoid, but if you're comfortable with the fact you're dying and you're like, oh, finally, you know, fuck this, basically. Uh, and this, this could be something, if people are genuinely religious, their religion definitely would help them even in the secular sense of avoiding pain at their death. They think they're about to go meet Jesus. Well, maybe they're thinking about that right as they expire, maybe in, in their mind, to their understanding, maybe they do go into a tunnel of like, now that slowly ebbs away as they uh, cascade off into total black eternal nothingness, but they avoided pain for what could have felt like a very long time, I suppose. So I would remind people just don't fear. And then let's say atheism is wrong. Let's say that uh, my belief is true. And this is just my belief. Let's say you reincarnate uncontrollably forever. Well, yeah, it's, it might affect uh, where you go. The state of mind uh, in uh, as your spirit sort of leaves the body under that sort of premise. Maybe it has something uh, to do with where you go thereafter. Maybe it certainly affects... I mean, if you have a lot of guilt and you're ruminating on all the, the supposedly terrible things you did in life, it could affect maybe your, uh, your ability to transmigrate into another uh, physical thing uh, or cross over dimensions into another. Maybe you become uh, something you were associated with in your last life. Maybe it works in both directions. Maybe time isn't fully linear. It's not moving in one direction in reincarnation. Maybe you can go back 2,000 years. You're, you reincarnate as uh, a Roman soldier or something. By the way, I, I hope that that's true. I would really, really like to go back to like classical antiquity and, you know, sort of, sort of just be wandering around the Greek countryside or something. I think that would be great, a nice pastoral life where culture is all about, hey, we sit here next to this statue and we drink all day after we, you know, talk about philosophy. That would be great. To be an upper class uh, Greek or Roman at the time must have been absolutely great. It's like nonstop drunkenness. And lots of cool pagan music and, and you know, I'm going to go down to the temple to worship Mithra or something. That would have been great. And then Christianity comes and ruins it all. No, just joking. <laughs> Half joking <laughs> from my perspective. Wouldn't it be better, though, whether atheism is true or reincarnation or an afterlife or something, wouldn't it be better to be, like, just sort of stoic about your own death? It will happen. You've got to ruminate on one fundamental thing you will die, at least in the physical sense. The, the physical body here, this physical body is going to rot away into nothing more than a dusty skeleton. 
It will happen. It's inevitable. I'm going to grow old. Hopefully, uh, by that point, I'll be like old and creaky and they'll be like, ah, fucking just take me now. Uh, you know, just uh, let me drink poison or something at that point. It's like, I'm, I'm miserable. <laughs> I've got osteoarthritis. I can't garden anymore. Uh, I can barely sit up straight. I can't even write books. You know, I'm like demented. Yeah, at that point, maybe it's like, oh, death is going to be sweet relief. You know, praise sweet Jesus for killing me tonight, basically. Um, that would be good. Or if you die catastrophically, let's say someone just randomly blows your head off. It's probably a pretty great death compared to a lot of them. You don't have time to think about the fact that you're dying. So being vaporized by a nuclear weapon would probably be about the most blissful way to go. It just completely erases you instantaneously. So there can't be any sort of lingering uh, fake afterlife sort of thing. You just sort of fade out into nothingness instantly. Be an interesting thing to actually witness that. Uh, but of course, there's no way to witness that without being dead and then of course you've got no uh, no guarantee that there's an afterlife or reincarnation at all it could just be turned back into blackness like you were before you were born i don't believe that uh again just based on my belief i think consciousness is preserved upon death but that's just my opinion man <laughs> i can't prove that nor do i really want to uh, in a way the mystery of death is a cool thing too death is the uniter life is the divider uh, according to many religious philosophies, upon death is really when you unite either with some divine total, I don't believe in that, I'm, I'm not a Buddhist, uh, or with the gods, or a god, or at least with your departed loved ones, or at the very least you're sort of communally buried in the ground or something, or <laughs> you've, you've turned into ashes, now you're part of nature again, you're part of other living things. Uh, whereas in life, we're separate. In fact, our, our basic biological tendency is to try to maintain homeostasis, keep, keep viruses and other stuff out. The only thing we want to imbibe is food, and that's just to preserve uh, our ability to prevent other things from piercing our physical existence, you know, getting stabbed, clawed to death by a cave bear or something. Uh, that's basically what it is. It's an interesting philosophical concept. You know, as above, so below. So I'll keep that in mind. That's about all. Peace out.